Now, this formula is one with which you should be familiar because we did this again in pre-AP. So you might not remember it exactly, but at least you should be familiar with it. And it looks very much like the form of Boyle's Law, and that's our formula for dilutions. This is truly just a stoichiometry in disguise and a little bit simpler way to approach it. So remember we called it Voom Voom. And it's simple and yet it's often overlooked. And you want to be careful about that. I've done it before. I've worked on an AP free response question. I've skipped it by accident. Whenever you see in a problem that you are adding volume to volume, you're going to have to voom voom. So think of that if it says this many milliliters plus that many milliliters. You're typically going to have to voom voom to find your new concentration. And when we do this, you just plug in and it doesn't matter what you assign ones and twos as long as you keep it consistent. So since that's the first molarity I saw, I'm going to call that volume one, which means that these milliliters, or excuse me, molarity one, that means these milliliters are my volume one. That's my volume two, and that's my molarity two. Now, much like Boyle's law, the units of volume don't have to be changed as long as the units of volume are the same, because anything you do to convert one would cancel the conversion for the other. So plug in, volume one times 18 is 250 milliliters times 1.500 molar. And I get a volume one equal to 20.83 milliliters. And what that would mean is I would have to take that 20.83 milliliters of my concentrated sulfuric acid, I purchase it, and I'm going to put that into a volumetric flask and dilute. So let's talk about that in just a little bit more detail because you'll be doing this in a lab very, very soon. And I want you to have a little bit of prep to do this. Now, what you're going to need, and this how-to kind of question, writing out lists of an experimental procedure is a common question. So you want to learn how to be detailed on this. This isn't asking us when it says, how do you prepare the solution? It's not asking you how to calculate. It's asking you physically, what are the physical steps you would do to prepare this? So what we're going to need is a 250 milliliter volumetric flask, much like, whoops, volumetric flask, much like this one over here. Uh, we would need possibly a uh, graduated cylinder or a graduated pipette. I would prefer, and we do have them in the lab, that you get a graduated pipette. It's going to be a little bit more accurate than a graduated cylinder. And I hope to be doing a video for you very soon on how to use pipettes and pipette bulbs. And we're getting a 25 milliliter one because our problem said we need to deliver a volume of our solute equal to 20.83. And it's got to be graduated because that's an odd volume. There's not going to be a volumetric pipette for that. I'm going to include a storage bottle because you always want to move it out of the volumetric flask so you don't risk breaking that while you're you know, performing your experiments or people are, are pouring in and out of it. A hood. I want to be very complete on this. We have a hood in the back of the room. We use that hood for a reason. And you want to deal with concentrated acids in the hood, not outside. And you also want to wear appropriate chemical resistant gloves and, you know, obviously goggles, etc. for that. Now, here's how I like to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'll typically fill it approximately two-thirds full of deionized water. Remember, we always have to add acid to water. So I'm going to add DI water. You could measure it. You could use a graduated cylinder. And you know you have 20, 250 milliliters of solution. And you know you need to save enough space for 20 mLs. But we also want to be careful because you don't want it too full initially because you want some mixing space there. 
So I fill it about two thirds full with deionized water, making sure that two thirds is under the amount of water I'm going to need. I'm going to pipette in my H2SO4. Now this is exothermic, so I'm gonna be very careful when I do this. I'm gonna cap and mix, and likely you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait for this to cool because since it is exothermic, your surroundings will increase in temperature. The flask is gonna feel hot to your hand. And since volumes expand with temperature, we won't have an accurate volume reading. So we're going to have to allow it to cool to room temperature or very close. And then Lastly, I'm going to add water to the meniscus till you know the bottom of my meniscus is on the line. Mix well and pour into a storage solution. So I'm going to mix again and then pour it into, and man, I have trouble with this. Pour this into a labeled bottle. We'll talk about that in class when we talk about safety. But do not ever pour a chemical into anything that isn't somehow labeled carefully. And I would put the words caution on that bottle here, and I'd likely add the word corrosive. And I would include the molarity that we were after, and we were after making a 1.500 molar. So I'd include that on the bottle, on my storage bottle as well. Next, we're going to move into something a little bit different, calculating molar mass uh, using some experimental techniques.